How long have you, you graduated from? I'm a graduate. Okay. I graduated in 1989 from the drafting shop. Um, mm -hmm. I left here, pursued my education in mechanical engineering, uh, worked as an applications engineer and a manufacturing engineer for about seven years before coming back here as a, uh, an instructor when my former shop instructor, Mr. Cantwell, retired. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, uh, but I know your father, so we can plug your father. Got the diner. Yeah, you used to yeah. have the diner there. Right. We used to go there all the time. Uh, I know your father's a great guy. Great guy. Yes, he is. Uh, Mitch, the, how many students do you get usually? In we typically get um, 20 freshmen, 10 in each cycle. Okay. That's the capacity of the shop. That's all okay. we can hold. Okay. All right. And you never have a problem getting them. Never have a problem getting them. Now, when you say drafting, does that, can that apply to, uh, I was we were doing a, a show with the, uh, the Tin Can Sailors, and they were talking about drafting different designs for submarine. Okay. And the submarine, the new Nautilus submarine, or whatever it's Nautilus, I guess you, or nuclear anyway, uh, took na a million drafting designs. Oh, I believe it. To, to, to <clears throat> put that together. I believe it. Is that... Is that, that, that sounds about right. Is that right? <clears throat> yes, because uh, my co-op job was actually at McLaughlin Research, which is uh, in Aquinnick Island in uh, Middletown. They're okay. a division of uh, Newick. They do drawings and, yeah. and things like that for... Uh, for the contractors, but uh, you know, I wasn't able to see all of that. But I, huh. but I heard how much goes into it. Yeah, it's um, it's a huge, huge. So there is a market for the students out there oh, sure. in drafting big time. Not yes. just not not necessarily uh, defense issues, but uh, also just about anything. Just about anything. We we're in the middle of a partnership right now with Newark um, Naval Underwater uh, System Center out in uh, Middletown. They um, they brought us some. Um, some parts and a 3D scanner, because they're looking to do some research. They would be able, like to be able to scan a part when they're on a submarine and say a part is broken, scan a part, um, put it into the software, and then print it, 3D print it in metal. Th these are things that they're looking to do in the future because they don't necessarily have these parts in stock. Yeah. Uh, they could be in another country. They could be in Guam, where there yeah. isn't yeah. Any, any resources. And they want to be able to self-sustain themselves with these older submarines. Um, so we're doing some research with them right now. We're, we're creating so parts. That was, would that mean that if you get, I'm sure you'll work it out, but does that mean that diamonds would make that part? Um, I don't know. I mean. No, we, would, we, we could actually print prototypes for them yeah. in our machines, but they're looking to print working metal parts. Yeah. Or w it could be plastic. It could be a part that's plastic, but yeah. something that they wouldn't have to necessarily keep in stock. All they would need is the machine to produce. I see, I see, I see. Uh, do you have many girls, uh, f females in the shop? Or? We do. I would say um, that we're probably maybe a 60-40 mix, maybe, uh, somewhere around there. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Not because they're, they're women, but it's amazing that they have an interest in that. They do. Yeah. And, and, and genuine interest in and that. And they, they do well. And I'm sure they do. And they see that future where before they didn't. We, we keep in contact with a lot of yeah. former graduates. We have some that are on our advisory board, females. Good. And doing very well. Good. Now, what happens is, uh, I was going to say is, uh, for example, uh, when they're talking about a new school, I always say it almost should be like a campus, you know, whereas you're, you're able to, you're only get, you have small capacity, you have no more room, uh, you're almost, you're turning away a couple of hundred kids, only sure. kids don't have the space for them. And the thing is, if a new school were to be built, it'd be great if it could be built in an area where you could have the campuses, the buildings. Right. building, you know, and, and transfer exactly. that into something that would that would enhance the school. That would make Massachusetts uh, by adopting this plan uh, and paying for it uh, would make uh, Diamond the the school. You know, I agree. What's the hardest thing you had to do in doing this in drafting? What is the toughest uh, thing a, for them to learn? There's a lot of math. There are softwares that they have to learn. Uh, the softwares are two-dimensional, we use AutoCAD. Uh, three-dimensional, we use SolidWorks. It's a 3D design software where they draw the part in three dimensions. They actually draw a full-size part, um, mm -hmm. and then they create the uh, views that they need to make the working drawings for the machinist or the metal fabricator to create the part. And then you must have a, a library here somehow where you keep this stuff, or is it just going to the computer? It's all, all uh, digital files. Okay, yep. so they can just pull it up anytime. That's they right. say, you come across something like that, you can pull it up. 
exactly. You know Storing what all of the old documents like we used to do you yeah. know, years ago when it was on paper. Yeah. That's that, all gone. That's we don't have any. We don't have any file cabinets. That's, that's uh, everything nice. is digital. It's nice. It's nice. The um, would, would the, the course be called just? Would it be called just drafting or? Uh, actually, it's called. We've added to our shop because of the way that the industry is going. It's it's called drafting and additive manufacturing. Mm -hmm. uh, additive manufacturing. I'll explain in a little while when we walk around the shop, but it's. It's creating solid parts through uh, addition of material in the 3D printers. Mm. So we'll, we'll be able to show these running uh, on Mr. Bellevue and Mr. Padula's side with the freshman and sophomore. They have uh, some, some desktop units that you'll be able to see. Um, and that's what we're, we're doing now, that the shop is moving towards um, actually not only drawing the part, but the student actually gets to create it, put it together, hold it where in the past they would draw the part and really maybe not get to see it. Maybe not to get to see it. Oh, right. my God. It's so quiet in here, man. It is quiet. Well, it, um, we do have a lot of students who are out on co-op right now. So. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, I was going to ask you that. Yep. Yeah, the juniors, uh, as you can see, most of the de these desks are empty. Um, they're, they're already starting their co-op jobs. So in the junior year, they can start their co-op yes. program. And there is a demand for them. There is a demand. Yeah. A tremendous a big demand in it's, trade school. It's been really picking up in the past couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, there was something on welding where it was just such a need for welding, I'm sure right. for drafting as well. <clears throat> but it's, uh, I went to the Navy uh, tin can sailors and got uh, copies of applications for welders okay. you know, from the Navy file. You know, so to give it to the, the, the school to right. say this is where you're going to go. There's a great, great demand for kids, boys and girls, who come from Diamond to go into the field. Yes. Big demand. Right, for sure. Yeah. Well, wow, anything you'd like to add to that, Mitch? Uh, the, uh, um, no, I just want to uh, say that you know we're we're keeping up with technology. Um, we are, as I said earlier, our shop is is turning to a direction where the industry is going, where yeah. drafters and uh, designers are actually creating parts. We have some students who are working at uh, at um, fabrication labs, 3D printing labs, where their job is to. Uh, load, the, load the printers, unload the printers, clean the printers. Um, that's a lot to do with, I mean, not only just putting the, the, the file in there and printing it, there's a little more to it. There's cleaning them out, maintaining them, loading new material, uh, post-processing operations where the student takes the part out of the printer and maybe has to do some cleaning up and some sanding and finishing up the part where it's actually presentable as a working part. Great. So uh, we're, we're heading in the direction that uh, that the jobs are going into, and we're, we're placing a lot of students on co-op. I'm here with uh, Nick Mello. He's uh, a senior in the uh, drafting shop. He's going to explain uh, one of the assemblies that w that he was doing at the beginning of the year. It's uh, done in SolidWorks. As you can see, the parts are all um, together in an assembly where you can fit them. You can, you can make sure everything goes together. This is the um, entire assembly of a uh, of what's the uh, engine. It's like an engine model. Um, what I did was, uh, I made uh, individual parts, like uh, here you can see the uh, engine block, the crankshaft, and um, I, uh, what I did was I, I made a, um, a solid model of uh, each part, and then uh, what I did was um, I uh, inserted them into uh, an assembly, in which um, I can uh, like um, connect all the parts and uh, simulate the actual, what the actual uh, Part would look like in real life, and um, yeah, I also uh, I made a drawing of this um, for more like a you know technical purposes, like a hand manufacturing. Each yeah. one of those parts would need to be produced in a machine shop, um, so the machinist would need to get all the dimensions off the working drawing. Um, Nick will bring one up for you. That's the assembly. But Nick, can you bring up a working drawing for them? Yeah, sure. You can see what that looks like. This is a, a simple one, it's a tool post. This okay. one. Yeah. So this is an example of what uh, a machinist would use. Um, all the dimensions on the part, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, which is a higher level of, of machining and inspection. So each individual part would have a solid model and a working drawing for the manufacturer. A few examples of, of additive manufacturing. Uh, this is the direction that the 
that the industry and our shop are, are going to. Typically, as I showed earlier, you would have a working drawing, it would be something like this. The, the drawing would go down to the machinist, the machinist would take all the dimensions and create the part. Whereas in our shop, we have 3D printers, additive manufacturing. We can take this solid model, download it into our software, put them into the machines and create this part in a fraction of the amount of time that it would take for a machinist to do that. Um, an example right here, this is a, uh, a small scaled model of a four cylinder engine. Uh, we, we printed these out with uh, some clear material and you can actually see the piston, the cylinders, you'll be able to see the pistons once this is all put together uh, inside of the part. So we can actually take our files, create working models in our 3D printers. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick explanation. We have some running here. This is called the Polyjet technology. What this does is it sprays um, material down in layers and it cures it with an ultraviolet light. The support material, which fills all the voids and, and uh, any, any cavities that would, be, uh, that would be needed to be filled with material, is, is a uh, water-based material. So when this comes out, we can take this, wash it off in a high-pressure um, power washer and be able to use the part immediately. This machine is capable of printing multiple materials at once. So for instance, we're printing a, uh, a tire there on a rim. This is a small scaled model of that. So we have a solid rim with a rubber tire printed all in one complete assembly. So once again, this is Polyjet technology. These two machines right here are FDM technology. This is fused deposition modeling. A quick way to explain that would be like a hot glue gun. It takes a filament and extrudes it up to a heated head. One is for support material, one is for model material. The heated head extrudes the material layer by layer, creating a solid part. So this right here was created FDM technology. It's ABS plastic. Um, part is workable. You can use this. You can drill it. You can tap it. You can do post-processing to it. Uh, it's, it's basically a working part. For instance, right here, this was a coupling that ran a dust collection machine in the carpentry shop. They stripped out the coupling and were unable to continue working for the day. Uh, we just happened to be down there taking a look at it. We took the, the stripped out coupling, came back up here, gave it to one of my students. The student drew up the profile of the coupling. We printed it out, extruded it, put this together, and they were back up and running in a couple hours, whereas they would be down for several days, if not longer, for them to order a part. So we got them up and running immediately based on 3D printing technology. Another portion of the curriculum that we do in the drafting shop, junior year, the students design and draft a three bedroom, two and a half bath, two car attached garage, ranch style home, single story home, full basement. Uh, they do a complete set of construction drawings uh, from start to finish. So they do the, the plot plan, the foundation plan, foundation plan details. They design their own floor plan. They get to put their bedrooms there uh, the way that they would like them. Their kitchen, they get to design the way that they would like it. Um, master bath, uh, a second bath, and then maybe a uh, half bath for, uh, for guests. Um, and, and they get to lay out the whole house the way that they would like it. It's their design. It's a full set of working construction drawings. So when they leave here, they could take the set of drawings, bring it to a building department, get a permit, and build the actual house. It's, it's a full set of construction drawings. So they do that junior year from approximately September, and it usually takes them until about March to complete all the drawings. There are 10 drawings in the set. They have to spec out all the windows, the doors. Um, they have a deck out in the back, full front covered porch, kitchen design layout with, with elevation drawings and details. So architecture is, is a sufficient portion of the uh, drafting curriculum as well. Freshman students are over here, and these are the sophomore students. They are presently working on um, projects that require revisions and modifications, which is probably one of the first things that the uh, drafting student would be doing if they uh, enter a co-op position, making changes to existing drawings. Uh, there are four projects. The students have to uh, take information um, that lists the changes, similar to um, documents that are used in industry called an engineering change order. They make the change to the drawing and then they document it in the corner in a revision box.
explain what the shift the fork is? It's a cast iron part that's used in mechanical engineering. Um, I'm not really sure where it goes for manufacturing, but it's a pretty widely used part. Right now I'm just changing it so that I can have some threads put into this part. What's, what's this in the upper corner here? What's that drawing for? That is a detail of that section of the part. It's just blown up to a two times scale. Um, and I'm taking dimensions from like other parts that aren't dimensioned on here already. So right now I'm trying to make this cut in between. But first I have to dimension it and stuff. And this is for now. I'm gonna leave this here because I have to find that right there. And yeah. Doing the um milling drag base and 3D printing it right now. It's that on the printer over there. So oh I can show you. supposed to be a thread, but um, it's kind of difficult on SolidWorks to make a thread. You can see from the bottom. And it's, isn't this called a spot face? That is a spot face. Yep, that's a spot face. Sorry, now I'm working on my open house project for next year. Um, it is a steel part. Um, so we had to make um, a solid model work of it too. And then we have to draw the uh, front, top, right side, and left side in AutoCAD. And then we have to dimension it. Um, we all have different ones. And yeah. I'm just doing, I'm just fixing it now. They're working on not as complicated projects as the uh, sophomore students, um, but they're working on working drawings, mechanical pots, uh, multiple views of the pot, fully dimensioned, material quantity that, uh, when completely done, could be uh, sent to precision machining for manufacturing. Uh, but that's the uh, information they get at the freshman level, and they incorporate that at the sophomore level with more advanced projects. Right now we're working on the uh, working drawings for uh, AutoCAD. I'm on figure 7.14, the frame guide. I have no real idea for what the frame guide would be useful for, but it is made out of cast iron and I would think uh, with an educated guess that it would hold a part in place so it has more accurate precision. I just finished putting on the finish marks. I'm just looking around for any errors or mistakes in this project. I know the frame guide is made of cast iron and it's put in un uh, units that are put are in metric. So it's measured in millimeters. These are all the dimensions for it. And I use these the length, the depth and uh, the width, the depth and the height, to figure out the spacing between the actual object on the screen and the border. Uh, right now I'm trying to find the center lines to see if the measurements from the center line to the actual circle are correct. Thank you so much for seeing your shop and all the kids enjoying themselves. They really enjoy themselves. They're really into it. Right. It's amazing, Mitch, what you accomplish here. It is. It's the, amazing. The, the past couple of years, we've uh, we've we've definitely uh, created a new environment, yeah. and um, we're we're very happy that we're able to do that and, and stay current with technology, and uh, it's really making a difference in the student that's. That we're producing. Just think about the things that the shops in, in the school, Diamond, uh, give, uh, make for the communities at no charge. Sure. Just think about the money that's saved by coming to Diamond and uh, you know asking for their help in a certain thing and, and it becomes an educational thing. 
and they do it, you do it. And then what they do is they, they make a, how much, how much, what a loss would that be if the new school wasn't created? What a loss that would be in children's, um, the minds, uh, exploding their minds into areas that they never thought about. That's right. And, and, um, and to have, and even today as you turn away students. So, so whatever happens, it, it can't, it's got to get bigger, not smaller. That's true, it does. And I, I mean, we're outgrowing, we have outgrown our shop already. Yeah. And uh, we're creating a lab next year where all of this equipment is gonna go uh, because we we have to stay up with this technology, but we just don't have the space to, uh, to accomplish that. Yeah. Thank you, Mitch Sweet. Thank you, Senator Norton. And always take my days with your father. <laughs>